Hello friends, this is Nanny from Nanny and the Moose and you might ask, what is that that Nanny is holding up? Well, I'm going to tell you what it is in a minute. The topic today is answering a couple of questions, maybe just two. One about where is your wedding dress today? And I'm going to tell you where mine is. And also, everybody has been saying, what's the story with your wedding ring? Now, that's a longer story. And my Moosey boy is going to come over to help talk about that. Moosey and I were married 61 years ago. And, of course, I had a, a lovely dress of a Lensan lace. It was beautiful lens on lace on the top, and it was the full traditional 1960 type wedding dress. Well, after the wedding was over, my mother had it, is it hermetically sealed? Is that the word? Like they do at the dry cleaners, they'll take a wedding dress and they'll pack it with uh, acidic free paper and put it in a box and seal it. And you can keep that for years, right? Not so right. Many, many years later, when our oldest daughter got engaged, we have six children, and it goes boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. And that was Dubby. And when she was planning her wedding, she said, Mom, I would love to wear your wedding dress. Well, what mother doesn't want to hear that? I was so thrilled that she, I was so touched because a lot of times the young girls want to pick out their own dresses. They don't want to wear mom's dress. And she had seen pictures of our wedding and my wedding dress. So we went up in the attic and we got the box down, the great big box. And we gathered on a Sunday afternoon in the living room. And all the kids were there, all six kids. And we all sat on the floor and we put the box down and Moose went and got a knife and little by little, we cut open the box. We looked at the acidic free paper. We clipped that and we opened it and OMG, my dress, which was a beautiful white, was not quite the color of mustard, but close. It had completely yellowed. It was horrible. And poor Dubby went, oh my God. I think she thought I was gonna hold her to her, her wish. <laughs> well, anyway, needless to say, everybody was so disappointed and we couldn't figure out what happened. Of course, we had no recourse because we were living in California by then. And when we were married, it was back in New Jersey and that cleaner was long gone. Years later, I kept the dress like I keep everything. And years later, in about, oh, I guess Colleen was about eight or nine years old, I started to make what we call memory Christmas stockings. And these stockings I have since made for the whole family. That includes all the children, all the spouses of all the children, um, all the grandchildren, 20 grandchildren, and now several of those are married and I've done their spouses and their children, 10 grandchildren. So we counted up 53. We have a couple of bonus grandchildren in there too. And I have made 53 of these stockings and I am going to show it to you. Colleen went and dug hers up because I wanted to share some of the stockings. On all the girls, all the girls' stockings are made of red velvet and all the boys' stockings are made of green velvet. Well, of course, I wouldn't put my wedding dress on any of the boys, but I did do our daughters and probably most of the um, grandchildren until maybe I might've run out. But here is a picture of Colleen's stocking. Now you say, why do you call it a memory stocking? Well, what the children do after I do the initial decorating and I'll put lace or a couple of appliques or whatever on there, they decorate their own stockings every year with awards and things that they've saved, precious things. And I wish you could see 
the whole families. They're beautiful. Some have more stuff on them than others, but this is Colleen's. And can you see my wedding dress? Now down the back of my wedding dress were all those tiny cover buttons all the way down from the neck, all the way down below the waist. And I took a piece of my lace and put it on her stocking, make it kind of look like a boot. Now I also put a piece of her wedding dress on here. And I believe that's her wedding dress. Yes, down the bottom. Or no, no, down, down at the toe, right down here. Well, that went on, of course, many years later when she got married. Now, this one, I believe, is Shannon's, her daughter Shannon's. And there is her mommy's wedding dress and a piece of my wedding dress down here. So that's what I did for all the girls. Mainly, it's, I'm, I love nostalgia. And this one is Ryan's, her first daughter. And there's my wedding dress. I cut the Alenson lace pieces out. And here's Colleen's wedding dress. So the daughters all have the mother's lace from their dresses. Now you say, why did you cut the dresses up? You know, that really wasn't, um, wasn't an issue with us. Um, I guess none of them wanted to save their dresses. There were different styles at different times. Dubby's dress was one of these ruffles all the way down the bottom. Um, Colleen's was beautiful. It was a, a beautiful, uh, oh, sequins and cut, cut work, and it was gorgeous. In fact, I'll try and put some pictures of the wedding dresses on here. But anyway, um, we had a business that I started with my daughters back in the 80s. It was called Romancing the Home. And the business was romantic white linens and laces, clothing, which was very much in style in the 80s, and bed linens that were out of this world. Some were Austrian, some came from China, but they were everything from Battenberg to Cutwork, beautiful, beautiful. Everything was white, Victorian, and very romantic in those days. And it was a very successful business. We sold antiques as well. And there was one woman who did some, I did, well, she did some consignment work for us. And uh, she made beautiful handmade tassels to hang on the keys to armoires and wardrobes and clocks. And she also was very talented and made lampshades. Well, guess what? She, I asked her if she would make a lampshade with the remaining laces from my wedding dress, and she did. And here is my Victorian shade. Now the fringe was not on my wedding dress, but you can see the lace. Now, um, I think there was some water damage on the shade, but you can see the lace in the, the different pieces going around the shade. And then she trimmed it with beautiful braid and then put the fringe on it. And it is gorgeous. I wish you could see it. Maybe, maybe I'll, in the second part of this video, when Moose comes in, I might try and put the light in it because it really shows up the lace. So where is your wedding dress? Is it in a box in your cellar or up in your attic? Did your daughter or your granddaughter wear your dress? I'd love to hear the answers to those questions. Oh, Moose just said he reminded me the other thing that I had. And this is part of the wedding dress story. Um, each daughter, we decided, since they didn't want to save their dresses, uh, wanted their children to have the christening dress made from their wedding dress. This is sort of... Uh, following the, the trend of where the wedding dress goes, from lampshades to Christmas stockings to babies' christening dresses. Well, I made all the christening dresses, and Colleen um, has my mother's, um, what do you call that, the hope chest that my father gave to my mother before they were married in 1936. And in that hope chest, she keeps all the precious things. So it was very easy for Colleen to dig out the christening dress. And this is the christening dress that Colleen's three children made, boys included, and a hat 
I'll have to show you that hat. It's so cute. Wish I had a baby here right now. This is the lace, the cut work. Her dress was absolutely beautiful. And they all wore the bonnet. And let me see if I can get the front of the dress here. Very, very long christening dress. This is the bodice. The sleeves were made of a, a sheer fabric. Very long, and, and the bottom is the beautiful part. Can you see this? Look at the lace on the bottom. Isn't that gorgeous? So this was Colleen's. Now Margie has one made for her three sons. We made a long christening dress. They were all christened um, usually anywhere between six weeks and six months. So they were, they were all babies when they were christened. Now Mikey, his children wore his christening dress that I made, how old is Mikey, 45, 46? And Mikey is 18 months older than Colleen. And I made a, a christening dress for Mikey, a long one. He was christened 45, 46 years ago. And Colleen wore the same dress. So we have, a, my nostalgia just goes wild. Uh, but I do, I do love to sew. And I, I do love the idea of all these. So these are stored in hope chests. And did I miss anything, Moose? I don't um, have Margie's dress or Mikey's right now because this idea sort of came to me within the last couple of days and um, I didn't have time to assemble it, everything. But you know what? I, I hope I have pictures of a lot of these christenings. Maybe I can dig it out. So the second part of this video, which is kind of related, is also an answer to quite a few questions that I've gotten about my my ring. Now I just shined it up with toothpaste, by the way. And this is my wedding ring, which Moose and I call it the love story that keeps on giving. And there's a very special story to this, but I want Moose to be here when we do this. So I'll call him over and we'll do the second part of our video. Well, Moosey's here, but so is my lamp. I tried to light it up, and I'm wondering if you can see it better. I don't know. Oh, Ooh, yeah. it's dark. <laughs> yeah, probably better there. Anyway, that's my lamp. I'm going to leave that on because I think we might need a little light here. Huh. What do you think, Moose? Okay. <clears throat> Come on up. I'm not paid to think. I just show up. <laughs> Okay, I needed Moose here for um, for the story because it's very sentimental, isn't it, Moose? Um, Come forward here. This shirt is sentimental to me, too. It's an L.A. shirt. Belongs to me. Buttons are on the other side. Guess what? It doesn't fit you, sweetie. Oh, okay. We tried it on you, so I have right. inherited have it. it. Somebody gave this to you, didn't they? Well, the second part of the story is very related because it has to do with my engagement ring and my wedding ring. Mm -hmm. And a lot of you have said, uh, since I wear it all the time, you know, what's the story behind that wedding ring? Well, there is a big story. And we'll let Moose start off. I had to get an engagement ring. I knew that I had to get, what was it, one carat, this sort of a setting. And my Aunt Bessie worked down in the New York Diamond area, Diamond District. And uh, she went and picked one out for me and had it set. And and I had it engraved inside, Ich liebe dich. Ich liebe dich. Because that was our favorite song. And, and that's German for? I love you. I love you too. When he proposed to me, by the way, he did not have a ring. And I still said yes. Remember that? Yeah. You did not put a ring on. I didn't know whether you were going to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? I didn't you were know. hedging your bet, huh? Yeah, I caught you at a weak moment. You did. 
Um, actually, uh, I think we were f officially engaged in February. He was in the army at Fort Knox and he, he did come home for a big party that my mother had for us. And that was February when I finally got the ring. Now, yeah. fast forward. So we, we planned the wedding for July. Mm -hmm. Well, the years went on in our wonderful marriage and 25 years later, um, we planned a 25th wedding anniversary trip to Hong Kong. And that was a big, big trip. And Moose said, I think what you need in your ring is another diamond for the second 25 years to come. And so <clears throat> we went down to the Los Angeles Diamond District. And you kind of knock on the door and they open it and it's locked. It's like 10 stories high, this building down there, right? Yeah, we picked, I don't know why we picked out this particular ex, uh, guy. But anyway, somebody, I think someone recommended it. We went down there and we told the guy we wanted to buy another diamond about this size. And he looked at your ring and said, I can't get it off. It looks like your knuckles have changed or something. <laughs> Well, to be truthful, I never once in 25 years took the, that ring, the set of rings. My engagement ring was just a plain solitaire and my wedding band never once I had six babies, never took the ring off. So my fingers had started to get a little arthritic or whatever, but it would not go over the knuckle. So, so the, guy, the guy took some kind of a cutter and cut the ring off. Cut them in the back, both rings. Yeah. And I, Moose was sitting there uh, on the other side of this. He couldn't come be, be, they're very careful about who comes where in that little tiny room. And I was behind a little gate. But and there was the, another couple in the room with us. There was a young couple who had come to this particular jeweler to pick out their engagement ring. They were young, they were in love, and they were watching Moose and I, you know, we were the old married couple. And we were old and in love. Old and in love. And he he took the rings off and laid them down. And I looked at my hand and it was indented. And I held my hand up and I said, Moose, my finger is so naked. And he looked at me and looked at my hand and said, I'm out of here. And I walked out the door and it locked behind me. <laughs> this, and, and I waited outside in the hallway for about 15 minutes. However. <laughs> what about the other couple? They they were dumbfounded. They they looked at each other and, <laughs> and then they looked at me and I said, oh, he's such a kid around guy. Don't worry. He'll, he, he'll just come right back in. You'll see. He'll be knocking on that door. Well, we sat and we sat and the... The poor, I felt more sorry for the couple because I knew Moose and I thought I knew Moose and the, the couple was getting a little worried as was the jeweler. So we sort of sat and chatted. Then finally, I knocked on the door. They let me in. When he came back into the room, he said, and I will never forget it. Do you remember? No. No. <laughs> he said, ah. I didn't see anything down on the street that I liked better, so I decided to come back. So that was the end of that. A couple months later, we did go to Hong Kong. And in the meantime, I saw a, a copy of a ring in a magazine, probably one of those wedding magazines, that had a beautiful design on it that could hold two diamonds of the same size. And it was made of gold. And it swirled, as you can, I don't know whether you can see this when I hold it up so close like this, but it, it swirled around, had two big swirls and a couple of smaller swirls. And I said, oh, that's, that's beautiful. That's what I want. So we were recommended by, I think, some business friends of Moose. Yeah, we had an office in Hong Kong and uh, my boss, who was the president of the company, uh, knew the right place to go for uh, gold work and diamonds and so forth. And that's where we went. And she came in with a drawing of what she wanted. 
I sat down with the, with a, a, a little a young fellow and showed him this drawing and he drew it and he gave us the specifications and we we kept the two diamonds. We had the the diamond in the the broken engagement ring with us and we did buy another one at a jeweler's. This was more of a a, a factory where they made the gold rings and things, mm -hmm. wasn't it? It wasn't mm -hmm. like a retail jeweler. Well, I think it was a wholesaler place. So we went back in a couple of days, gave him the two diamonds. We sat there and watched, and he set the two diamonds in. Yeah. And then, and that was that, our 25th. Now, Fast forward <laughs> another 25 years on to that, and right before our 50th wedding anniversary, Mosey said, I can't remember. <laughs> Mosey said, I think I would like to add something to the ring for our 50th wedding Ooh. anniversary. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you losing your mind <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. So I'm working on it. <laughs> so we have a local jeweler who does work for the family, and he has done the repairs for us, and um, he has worked made rings for some of the children and grandchildren. <laughs> so we went down to see him, and we he looked at the ring, and he said, "Okay," he said. What do you think you'd like to put in? Moosey didn't really have any idea. He said, how about some emeralds? And Moosey said, hmm, that sounds nice. But how much? How much, of course. <laughs> so, and, and he told him. He was a nice guy. Oh, yeah. This kid went to high school, went to survey with, uh, he, he with our boys. Nice man. And yeah. an artist, too. Oh, because yeah. Because he figured out how to put the diamonds from your mother's watch that she gave you well, know, a little tiny one well what he did was and the, and the emeralds yeah into it so what we did we bought two half carat emeralds which as you can see he put into two of the other little ends and then i had brought some of my mother's jewelry uh down to basically get it appraised and her father had given her a beautiful uh platinum or sterling watch very ornate when she was 16 and it had some diamonds in it and he looked at that he said wouldn't it be nice if we put these two little diamonds they weren't large they were small they, and i i think i can see them, but they're there they're there so uh, this ring is so nostalgic and has so many memories for me and so he did and that was my 50th but you know what something funny we tried to get the price down because it was an extraordinary amount of money. And so he said, well, if you have any jewelry, gold jewelry, I will melt it down and give you something off the price. And what I had on my hand was this college ring from 1959. And they were huge in that day. And it was solid gold. And I was president of the class and chairman of the ring committee. So I got a free one. <laughs> and he weighed that and he said, oh, that looks like at today's price of gold, it's worth X, Y, and Z. I forget what it was. A couple hundred dollars, which he took off the price of the emeralds and setting. Yeah. And that's my ring. And there was... And I don't have a ring anymore. You have a beautiful wedding ring. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you have a lovely wedding ring. Yeah. Cool. Now, Pretty the cool. the only sad part to this story, and we will we will end it after this part. Um, a couple of years after um, the whole ring is now what it is, um, I was at a baby shower for our granddaughter Bridget, and I went with Margie and Colleen and Dubby and all my daughters, we went in the same car and I was driving and on the way home, I happened to just glance at my, my ring and one of the large carrot diamonds was gone. Oh, you can imagine. We looked everywhere. I called Bridget. She looked all over her house. We looked here. We looked in the car everywhere for weeks. And, um, 
it, it wasn't feasible or financially smart to buy another diamond at this stage of our life. I didn't feel I needed that. And and so we put the ring away for a while. I, I don't know what I wore, maybe a, a little something. And... <clears throat> And then one day, Moo said, you know, I miss seeing that ring on your finger. Mm. So I said... I love that oh. ring. Oh, I do too. And and I get so many compliments on it. And and so we said, well, why not a cubic zirconia? They make these wonderful, wonderful yeah. rings. So we went back to our friend, jeweler. Right now, I can't remember his name. Nice and and uh, we went back to the jeweler and he said, yeah, I have a nice cubic zirconia. It will match the other ring and nobody will ever know. And I said to him, oh, at one point, you and I uh, looked when, we, I don't know, it might, might have been in Hong Kong, when we looked at my original diamond through the jeweler's, as a name, doesn't it? What's the name of that thing? Feather. That he, oh, the, the, I don't know. The thing he looks through. And he let us look through it, and he said, I want you to notice, so you'll always be able to recognize this particular diamond for safety purposes, that it has a little feather in there. Well, I said, well, what's, what's a feather? It basically is a boo-boo. A feather in a diamond is, is a, so, so a little something that makes it not perfect. And that was the original diamond. So I said to the jeweler, do not tell me what the remaining diamond is. I really don't want to don't know. Don't tell us which one's the, the, the zirconium gummy of them. Right. I, well, not only that, that's true. And I don't know, believe it or not. And I said, I really don't know, want to know which ring was lost. The one that we bought on the 25th oh, wedding yeah. anniversary or whether it was the original yeah. diamond. And I would die if I knew that it was the original diamond. So I don't know. I'm very happy. And that's my ring. That's and that's the story. the story. And we call it the ring that keeps on giving. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The ring that keeps on giving. That's right. So I hope you enjoyed mm -hmm. uh, both these stories that were somewhat related. And um, we have another video coming up. And I have gotten um, a couple of products since my hands are so awful as you know, but I love my big rings. I'm worried about, and I'm not worried about it, but I, I found out there's some things that you can do about the little brown spots of the aging and whatever. So but anyway, can I go now? You might go, because I'm just going to say goodbye. So say goodbye to your friends. Goodbye. Love you. <laughs> so thank you for watching. I hope you were entertained by this. I know there were several people that were curious about the ring. And um, also, I had mentioned the wedding story once and never told the full story. So now, now you know. This was just entertaining. Next video, I um, I have purchased a few little things for um, some skin products. that, uh, And I'm also making my very own something. So next video, maybe that's the one we'll talk about that. So I love you all. Thank you for your your faithful viewing and subscribing and those of you who haven't come on subscribe and become part of our family so until our next video bye for now <laughs>